But what you can use in the leaf is this. So the, yeah, the color works right now, but that's that's not a real safe thing. I want you to look at this. What does that one remind you of if we run camping? Hino. Aha. Uh -huh. So if pin oak is not native, uh -huh. good. Very, very deep sinuses. It's very much pin oak looking. So when you have these very, very deep, deep, so in the red oak group, but very, very deep uh, sinuses, long lobes, where you're thinking, well, kind of like a pin oak. That's right, but we don't have pin oak here. So it's a scarlet oak. So that leaf can, can work. Now, there's also sun and shade leaves. All right, the shade leaves fill in a little more, but they still go in about halfway, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so even a shade leaf of the scarlet oak goes in deeper than black oak. Right? Another characteristic, and I heard some people say, oh, maybe it's northern red oak, because it does have these flat tracks, and it, it will have them when they're young, but then very abruptly from about waist high, and you'll see this on bigger ones, uh, about waist high to head high on a little 15 inch one, it'll that those tracks will stop. A, a northern red oak this size would pretty much be slick, totally smooth. You wouldn't see tracks, you, it would just be a smooth trunk if it was northern red oak. And then that one we saw in the woods, they were like that big around, still had those marks. So this is just because of the age of this thing. All these are very straight. What, what, are they, what do you see? A lot of dead branches. Scarlet oak is kind of the Virginia pine of the, of the oaks. A lot of dead limbs. They are not good pruners. The branches die, but they stick on there like Virginia pine, like a bunch of dead bones hanging on there, and they stay there. So a lot of, a lot of knots in the lumber. They don't. This tree's not used for quality lumber. It's used for real rough sawn lumber for like pallets, mine posts, railroad ties, where you don't care if there's knots in it, right? But a, but a floor, that'd be a problem. All right, here's how I describe the acorn. It looks like a black oak that, remember, okay, black oak had the thatched roof, right? Real bolt, real fat cap. It looks like a black oak that you put one coat of varnish. A black oak cap with one coat of varnish. You know why I'm saying that? The scales, the leaf or scales on the edges are kind of pasted down. The scales are kind of shiny in places, but kind of fuzzy in other places. It's like it needs another coat of varnish. Look under the bottom of your acorn. Uh, this right there the bottom, turn your acorn over. Ooh, let me see that. Okay, kind of roll it in the light a little bit. Do any of you see rings, cracks and splits that form rings? Yeah. Yeah. You see that? About half of the scarlet oak, scarlet oak acorns will have those concentric wow. rings. If you took a black oak bud and crossed it with a northern red oak bud, you could do such a thing and create this hybrid. You'd have a scarlet oak bud. Black oak was angled and fuzzy, right? Northern red oak was round and no fuzz, except maybe a little at the top like a snow-capped mountain. You cross it, you get a scarlet oak. And here's what scarlet oak is. Kind of angled on the lower half and fuzzy on the top half. They get chestnut blight. Uh, last week you saw a post oak gets chestnut blight. Did they show the cankers? Did you see yeah. the? Yeah. It doesn't kill them outright, but they'll often have very serious what we call butt swell. And I will draw that. Okay, normally trees have root flare. You know, if they, that, that's normal, right? Butt swell is like this. It's not good looking. It's. They'll be like that, and it's very diseased in there. That tree's got a lot of rot in it. And sometimes the whole tree will be hollow for 16, 20, 24 feet because the, a lot of carpenter ants get in there and just hollow it out, and it's caused by chestnut blight. And it doesn't acutely kill it like it does chestnuts, but it lingers in there and certainly shortens the lifespan of it.